R. L. Tilson, Joy Was In My Heart. this Mass, we shall be praying for all your personal intentions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, restorer and lover of innocence, direct the hearts of your servants towards yourself, that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So, being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response is, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us 
when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Response. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem is built as a city, bonded as one together. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Response. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. For Israel's witness it is to praise the name of the Lord. They must set the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Response. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. says the Lord, whoever abides in me bears much fruit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, I constantly receive feedback about the Eucharist that we celebrate, either complimenting the choir and the beautiful harmony or perhaps complimenting the decor and the floral arrangements or maybe from time to time even speaking about the reflections and today I thought I'll bring to your notice the flowers that are here on this altar you see a couple of days ago when these flowers came into the church they were so fresh the leaves were absolutely green but over the last couple of days we've noticed that the leaves are now turning brown and they'll eventually die up, dry up, they will die, they will wither, and then they will have to be burned outside. This is what the gospel is all about today. You see these flowers and the leaves have been disconnected from its roots and therefore it naturally will wither because of this disconnect. There is no more this I abide in you and you abide in me. And therefore, 
this is what will eventually happen to these flies. They will die off and then they will be burned. Jesus invites us to abide in him, to stay connected because he is the vine. We are the branches. The moment there is this disconnect, then we, like these leaves that have turned brown, are eventually going to die off. We'll wither and then we will be burned. And therefore we are in need of pruning constantly because there's a tendency for us to think that we can be away from the vine for a while, that we can stay disconnected, that we can tune off, that we can keep Jesus a bit of a distance away from us, at least for some time. And it doesn't work like that, my dear brothers and sisters. The moment we make that choice, we begin to lose our roots, we begin to lose our faith, we begin to become those who are on the loose end of life. And therefore Jesus invites us to stay connected to Him. It's not an easy situation that we are in, in this day and age. Perhaps the last couple of months, the last couple of years have not been easy for us. And yet there could be a tendency for us to say, God, where are you in all of this? I've said this time and again in our reflection. And Jesus is in the same place that He always was. Always present in our midst, even in the midst of suffering, pain, even the loss of lives. And yet He invites us to stay connected with Him. Never to lose faith, never to allow our trust and belief in Him to ever fade away. I pray that each one of us, my dear brothers and sisters, truly continue to remain connected with Jesus, who is the true wine. Our offer to him on the pattern. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifice of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, then formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But, but deliver, deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours, now and, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us all for each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Our communion hymn, Lord, we touch you today. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses, 
and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts we pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make this prayer through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit and may the peace and blessing of almighty god the father the son and the holy spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever amen, amen. go and announce the gospel of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to god, god. I assess to him he is lord Have this mind among yourselves the mind of Jesus